got to start personally, and it was it was ruining my testimony personally because I was doing something I didn't want to do, and I had to realize that you've got to pick and choose the battles. If I have to do something, make sure I'm doing it in a godly way, and and don't let it ruin my whole day. Yeah. You know, and um, and that church is is important. Yeah. It was either yet doing it yesterday or or missing church today, and you know, and, and so it's like. I, I, I know what he means by remaining there, that sometimes we don't have control over things. Yeah. We need to, what God's working with me with is keeping my anger in check when things don't go my way. Yeah. And, it, and it's hard. It's he's, hard. He's working yep. with me with that. It's yep. very hard. Yeah. Well, what, well it, <laughs> and that's where wisdom comes in, you know. I'm, now, if I was in your spot, yep. this is what I would have done. I would have said, heck with the window. I'm not selling my house. It's not going nowhere. I would have worked on the window, come to the fellowship, come back and work on it. That's what I would have done. You know? Uh, you know. But, like, that's hindsight. You know, you look, but what's cool, you, what I like what you said is that uh, you saw it, you got angry. It kind of ruined your whole spirit like that, you know? So that's good. You caught that. Some people wouldn't catch that. So that's good. You caught that. That that tells you you're sensitive to the spirit. It tells you that you're, that you know, that, so that's good. That's yeah. good. I just need to learn not to allow it to. Um, yeah, not to fester. Interfere. Yeah, exactly. Stuff. Like you said, it just wet and not yeah. interfere with the life. Just yeah. let it roll off. Yep. So look at uh, <clears throat> look at uh, uh, First Peter one thirteen. First Peter 1.13 says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I like this. Gird up the loins of your mind and be sober. We need to walk soberly before the Lord. In other words, be, be alert. Be, you know, watch what's going on. Okay? That's, that's the thing is, we start out our day with that intention. And, yeah. And as we go through it, we got to keep referring back to it. Oh, yeah, because that's where the distractions come in. Yeah. How many, how, many, how many of you go to work and you, you've had your devotion, you're all pumped up, you're all, praise the Lord, la, la, la. And then one hour after you get to work, it's like, man, I, what's going on here? You know, how come I'm not smiling? Come, it, what it is, it's work. And it's the distractions. And you, uh, you have to keep your mind on the Lord all the time. The thing to do is keep the main thing the main thing. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and there are jobs that are difficult. And, you know, because you're thinking of the job. And, you know, God expects you to work. Amen. You can't sit there. You can't, you can't drop what you're doing and say, okay, I'm going to pray for 10 minutes. You can't do that. Okay. But, but what you can do is train your mind to, you, can, you know, you can talk to the Lord and drive, can't you? Sure. sure you can. You know? So do that at work. Lord, I'm having a hard time, but I'm going to think of you as I try to solve this problem. You'd be surprised what the Lord will do. What I do is if I come into some kind of conflict, I just say, I can do all things through There you go. strengthens me. Yeah. Or, as you have told me before, Lord, I'm working for you today. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Yep. Um, verse 25. Where? Verse 25 in 1 John 2. Notice he says, And this is the promise that he hath promised you eternal life. Now, there is the promise of eternal life for all born again believers. This great promise of God to man. It's a great promise. God has made many promises, but this is the one promise that supersedes all others, that he grants us eternal life. Amen? What great joy. Eternal life is the supreme promise of God. <clears throat> it's very important that you understand that, because that's the thrust of this verse. That the gospel must remain in us, and if we are to receive eternal life, then we better, you know, stay with Christ. Well, what we, we took 
actually saying there too what we do here determines what we are there? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. We'll get to that. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> now, let me ask you a question. What is eternal life? <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people confuse uh, when you tell them you're reborn and you have a promise of eternal life to you know, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And uh, they think you're going to you're going to live on like this. This isn't it. Oh, no. This is uh, 57 <laughs> forward. Right. Know, this is not going on. Right. My soul is going to have eternal life. There you go. But I'm not having eternal Right. This, this stuff here is not going to go. <laughs> okay. <goodness>. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. Forever? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So that... <laughs> <laughs> so that's a that's um that's a good definition. What else? What, what what when you think of eternal life, what does it mean to you? I, I think of when I, people ask me, I tell them, you know, you're going to live forever. Your soul is going to live on forever. Right. But where you spend that time depends upon what you do about Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Hope, freedom. Hope, freedom. Ability to be in God's glory. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I think of it now. It's not something promised. I mean, now. The future. Yeah. You have it now. All right. You're all getting warm. See, it was a trick. It's not a trick question. What is eternal life? See, you're all thinking of the eternal part, but it's called life. Life. What is eternal life? It is life. Real life. It is the very life of God Himself living in you. And I. That's life. <clears throat> See, human beings are just existing if they're not saved. They don't have life. They got they got a human life that most of the time is miserable. But not the believer. See, we have real life upon this earth living the life of God that lives within us. It's present. It is the very energy force being, it's the very principle and power of life. Our eternal life gives us power to live a godly life on earth. Exactly. So when people see us, they say, wow, the living God is living through them. I see God in them. Real life is living for who? God, Jesus. That's real life. And we have it now. And it, like you said, it's going to get better when we get to heaven. Save your fork. Save the fork. There you go. <laughs> You see, eternal life has to do with both quality and with what life really is, with duration, with God. That's wonderful. To live forever in this present world uh, with the world like it is is not necessarily a good thing. The world and man's body need changing. The changed life is found only in the eternal life. That's how we change. Because the body's not going to change. It's going to get older and older and tighter and tighter until finally the heart stops and we're gone. And my wife was saying the other day, she says, you know, the only thing Jesus didn't do, that he suffered everything, is old age. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I think, I think he suffered old age when all those sins were piled on him. Well, he, yeah, on the cross, yeah. <clears throat> You know, it's, it's interesting when it comes to old age, you know, it takes grace to be able to live an elderly life, you know. I'm only 62. The other day I was, I was meditating and I was, I was looking down, I'm saying, I don't like these spots, you know. <laughs> and I'm getting them all over my face, you know. I, I, tell you, I was shaving the other day. I said, you know, Lord, I don't like this getting old. I don't, I, you never think of it when you're 30. Or, and then I'm, th I'm, so I'm getting all these spots. And I, said, I looked at I said, man, my skin.